Now let's paint the sun blue. Blue stars actually do exist. They're called blue giants. Fortunately, our sun is not one of them. Why fortunately? Well, because if it was a blue giant, it would be a young, beautiful, unimaginably large, and very, very hot star. See, our red is hot, blue is cold logic doesn't apply to stars. The hottest stars are white and blue, and the coldest are yellow and red. Yeah, our sun is actually very cold compared to other stars. Now, take the average temperature in your city, but multiply it like by hundreds of thousands. Yeah, we're struggling with global warming here, but global burning? Eh, no thanks, blue giants. Anyway, let's imagine that the sun turned blue. How would we see the world? Surprisingly, nothing would change. Remember how I said that the atmosphere scatters blue light? That's why, in this case, everything would remain almost the same. Maybe the sky would get bluer, but we wouldn't see much difference. And finally, the darkest, pun intended, option. What if our sun turned black? Stock up on lamps and candles because there is no more light. People use electricity all over the world 24-7. We also can't see the moon anymore. After all, we can observe it these days only because the sun's rays get reflected off of it. Now, the only thing we still have to illuminate our nights are stars, but they don't help us much. Good thing this scenario is totally unrealistic and there are no black stars, right? Well, yeah, there are no black stars. And still, our sun will eventually become completely black one day. And I don't mean a black hole. I'm talking about black dwarfs here. You've probably heard of white dwarfs. Maybe even seven dwarfs. When a star like our sun is about to finish its life, it expands and turns into a red giant. And then, gradually losing its upper layers, it turns into white dwarfs. Since they no longer produce fuel, they slowly cool down. All that remains is a small core, living out its life and burning bright. And when the star cools down completely, right, it turns into a black dwarf. But you've probably never heard of them. Why? Because, surprise, surprise, they don't exist. And no, I was not lying. The thing is, a star needs about one quadrillion years to turn into a black dwarf. And our universe is still a baby. It's only about 14 billion years old. So no star has reached this stage yet. Even the most ancient of them still emit a little light. That's why black stars are just a theory. And it's unlikely that we'll ever see such a star at all. But remember the famous saying, the stars that we see at night are already ghosts because their light has reached us only now. Well, that's a myth. They're all still alive. Why am I telling you all this? Well, let's imagine that our sun turned into a black dwarf the entire solar system would immediately get plunged into absolute darkness. It would also be terribly cold. The moon would leave its orbit and crash into Earth. Wait, no. Let's overlook this moment and assume we're still alive. Fortunately, we wouldn't freeze instantly, as you might think. Earth's core has its own temperature, more than 9,000 degrees. But the temperatures on the surface of the planet would still immediately drop to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. The core would gradually cool down. Every two months, its temperature would drop by two times. In just two months, Earth's surface temperature would be minus 190 degrees, and in a year, it would reach minus 450 degrees. Most plants would disappear pretty quickly, not because of the cold, but because of the lack of photosynthesis. Others would live a little longer thanks to the oxygen still remaining in the atmosphere. And, oddly enough, trees would survive for a very long time. They have a slow metabolism and get sugar from the ground. The upper layer of the oceans would freeze very quickly. Fortunately, this thick crust of ice would insulate deep waters, so the entire ocean wouldn't freeze for some time. Marine creatures would be doing pretty well. They existed long before us and are already used to crazy temperature changes, the lack of oxygen and food, huge pressures, and other joys of deep sea life. And what about us humans? Well, first of all, we'd start getting sick. Without vitamin D, people would face a huge number of different health problems. Also, our bodies need sunlight to produce melatonin. This melatonin helps us understand when we should go to bed and wake up. If people didn't have this hormone, their bodies would get very confused and wouldn't understand whether they needed to sleep or not. That would mean insomnia for many people. But we would still be able to survive. We'd have two options to build giant submarines and go down into the depths of the ocean closer to Earth's core, 
or stay on the surface, living our lives in some location where we'd have sources of geothermal energy. In Iceland, for example. We could also settle near volcanoes. Their heat would be enough to warm us for a long time. Our vision would adapt to the dark, but at some point, it would reach its maximum. So we'd need to get used to living in complete darkness. But who knows? Maybe we would adapt to this life, too. So, which option would you prefer? Living at the bottom of the ocean in a submarine or on the surface near volcanoes? Your alarm goes off and you open your eyes, groaning. Wait, why is it so dark? Is it still night? Your watch says otherwise. You come up to the window and see people running around in panic. Apparently, the sun has disappeared. Interestingly, people only realize it eight and a half minutes after it had happened. That's how much time sunlight needs to reach our planet. So Earth kept orbiting the recently vanished star, and people had no clue. And then the last rays of the sun reached us. What would happen to Earth, the moon, and other planets of the solar system if the sun was to disappear into thin air? And would humans survive this catastrophe? Now, the sun is a giant light bulb supplying energy to the entire solar system. Not only our planet, but all the other celestial bodies in our star system are locked in elliptical orbits around the sun. In other words, the sun is the ruler of our world, keeping everything in balance. You see, every planet is constantly falling towards the sun because of the star's immense gravity. But there's also a lot of sideways force, aka centrifugal force, that moves the planets away. These forces are perfectly balanced at the moment, but everything would go downhill with the disappearance of the sun. The planets would still continue their forward motion and leave the borders of the solar system. Keep in mind that Earth revolves around the sun at a mind-boggling speed of 67,000 miles per hour. If there was no more gravitational pull from the Sun, Earth would immediately shoot out of its orbit, and its speed wouldn't decrease. The same would happen with all the other planets in the solar system. They would go on and on through the dark cosmos until they found another object with powerful gravity that could capture them. It might last for hundreds of years. Now, let's see what would be going on on our planet. Animals would likely be the first to feel the consequences of the sun's disappearance. They would become agitated, as the darkness would come way earlier than usual. Birds would become quiet, settling down for the quote-unquote night. There wouldn't be any natural light at all, even moonlight. All because there wouldn't be any more sunlight for the moon to reflect. Without sunshine, there would be no photosynthesis, so plants and trees would stop growing. Herbivore animals would soon chew their way through the remaining vegetation, and there wouldn't be any food left for them, and us. The temperatures on Earth would slowly start falling. Our planet does have a core made of molten iron covered with a mantle of molten rock, so some heat would still be filtering through the planet's crust, keeping it warm. But it wouldn't last forever. People would start burning wood and coal to fight the cold and survive, but without food, it wouldn't help much. The seas and oceans would freeze, together with all their inhabitants. In the end, the atmosphere would collapse, leaving our planet vulnerable to the harmful radiation waves roaming through space. This would make life on the frozen planet even more difficult. Most living organisms wouldn't survive these harsh conditions. Those that live beneath the surface would probably survive, warmed up by the weak heat coming from the Earth's core. As for people, we would probably have to stay in large groups, using the energy received from nuclear fusion reactors. Or the whole scenario would get much more tragic. While hurtling away into space, Earth could collide with another planet, get hit by an asteroid, or even get pulled into a black hole. Or the planet could continue traveling for thousands of years until it found another star to orbit. Now, how about we take a look at what would be happening right after the disappearance of the sun?
Uh-oh, that was very disturbing. Luckily, this is a very unlikely scenario because stars don't vanish just so. They can run out of their star fuel, that's true, but miraculous disappearances won't happen. You hear some noise in the street and rush up to the window to check what caused it. You look up at the sky and just stand there, speechless. The moon is giant! It looks much larger than usual and it's both beautiful and scary. So what would your life be like if the moon moved twice as close to Earth as it is now? Unfortunately, it would be quite a catastrophic scenario. You see, the moon has a pretty strong gravitational pull on Earth's oceans. It produces two high tides and two low tides per day. But with the moon so close to us, the tides would get eight times higher. Some regions would be completely covered with water during the day. The water would only retreat at night. Many islands and highly populated coastline territories would become uninhabited because of this. Many other regions would experience frequent devastating floods. But if you think it would be the only consequence, let me tell you this. The moon also has a tidal effect on dry land. That's why if our planet's natural satellite was to suddenly relocate, its gravitational pull would increase, making waves of energy reverberate throughout the planet. This would affect Earth's crust, triggering earthquakes and starting volcanic eruptions. Now, let's leave Earth and the giant moon for a while and have a look at Jupiter's moon, Io, which is the most volcanically active world in our solar system. This volcanism comes from the push and pull from Jupiter's gravity. Two other moons of the gas giant also have an effect on poor Io. That's why Io's surface is littered with hundreds of volcanoes. Most of them are spewing sulfurous plumes high above the surface of the moon. Our planet might face the same fate should the moon move so close to it. And that's not all. Earth's spin would start to slow down over time. Look, the moon's gravity pulls the oceans, and the resulting friction between the water and the ocean floor slows Earth's spin. Yes, Earth is slowing down even now as you're watching this video, but this process is almost imperceptible, around one thousandth of a second per century. If the moon was twice as close to us, the rotation of our planet would slow much more, making days and nights longer. If people managed to survive unexpected earthquakes, high tides and volcanic eruptions and got used to longer days and nights, they would get an award. Solar Eclipses These spectacular events that occur when the moon passes between the sun and earth would happen much more frequently. Since the moon would cover a much larger area in the sky, it would pass in front of the sun more often. People on earth would be able to see the sun's outer atmosphere, called the corona. It would shine beautifully around the silhouette of the moon. Such solar eclipses would also last much longer. But what if the moon didn't shorten the distance overnight? What if it was a much slower and much more gradual process? Then our planet's crust would shift more slowly. Tides wouldn't change so dramatically either. This would let living creatures on the planet get used to the new conditions and adjust in time. Longer days and nights would likely change the climate, and animals would have to evolve to adapt to it. Their eyes would have to change to be able to deal with brighter moonlight at night. Prey would have to learn to hide better, but predators, on the other hand, would have more advantages when hunting. But what catastrophe would have to happen to make the moon move so close to Earth? Well, it could be some massive object, like a giant asteroid passing very close to the Earth-Moon system. If the moon was in the way of this space traveler, it could take energy from Earth's satellite which would cause the moon to spiral towards our planet. It's becoming colder by the minute. The temperature drops below zero very quickly. And although there's no snow, the cold is becoming unbearable. Hoarfrost appears on the ground, the grass, and the trees. 
and ice forms on bodies of water at an incredible rate. Shivering people all over the planet raise their eyes to the sky, and their jaws drop in disbelief. The sun has become twice as small as it used to be. It now looks like a distant speck, and it won't be able to heat the Earth any longer. But the worst thing is, there's a huge blazing rock coming right at the horrified spectators from the sky, and the impact with that thing will undoubtedly do a lot of damage. Okay, let's go back to our objective reality. The Earth is exactly in the sweet spot of our solar system. It's neither too close nor too far from the sun, making the temperature on our planet not just tolerable, but rather pleasant. Scientists often call Venus, the second planet from the sun, our Earth's evil twin, because it's so hot and inhospitable that no life is possible on it. Of course, there are thick clouds in its atmosphere that rain acid, and the greenhouse gases raise the temperature on the surface to unbearable values. But even if Venus didn't have those, nothing would still be able to live there because of the proximity to the sun. If there was any liquid water, it would evaporate too quickly, leaving life no chance to develop. On the other hand, Mars, going next in line after Earth, is a bit too far away from the sun, which makes it cold and lonely. The temperature on its surface is below freezing, and it never warms up enough for water to stay liquid for long. That's not to mention the lack of atmosphere on the red planet, the element that provides the Earth with breathable air. So, if our planet shifted closer to or farther away from the sun, its temperature would either rise or fall respectively. A few hundred miles wouldn't make much difference. The circling of Earth around the sun is uneven anyway, and we constantly get nearer to our star or fly a bit away from it. The distance that would matter is measured in millions of miles. And yeah, just like I showed you at the beginning of this video, we'd see the sun a lot smaller than we do now if we went that far. The temperatures might not fall at the exact moment of the shift, as there would still be some warmth left. But in the following winter, our planet would probably stay cold forever. The oceans would be covered with ice, and the overall sea level would drop. And ultimately, the ice would reflect more of the sun's heat back into the atmosphere and space, not allowing the surface of our planet to get the necessary warmth. And more ice means less water vapor in the atmosphere. Water vapor captures heat too, creating clouds. So the colder it is, the less rain. The cold and the lack of rain would not let any plants survive for long. So the areas of icy and barren landscape would grow fast, leaving only the areas along the banks of rivers intact for a while. After some time, the rivers would stop running too either frozen or dried out because of losing their sources, lakes and seas, which would, of course, freeze as well. Any life dwelling near them would disappear. Plants first, and with them, everything else, since plants produce both food and breathable air. And with that, the Earth would become a frozen wasteland. As for the giant blazing rock I mentioned, it was an asteroid coming from outer space because of the shift of our planet's orbit. Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system, acts as a natural shield for us against space rocks. It has a huge mass, and most asteroids flinging from outer space get caught in its gravity and fall on its surface. There's no life possible on Jupiter, and its surface is gaseous, so asteroids tend to disappear in it without a trace. Still, some manage to get past Jupiter, where Mars comes into play. It also contributes to our defense by holding the asteroid belt between itself and Jupiter in place. The two planets' combined mass creates a gravitational field that doesn't allow the asteroids from the belt to fly in random directions, hitting everything in their path. If there was no Mars between us and the belt, we'd be used to meteor showers almost more than actual rains. Say the Earth has replaced Mars in its orbit, 
And now, we're hundreds of millions of miles farther away from the Sun. The mass of the Earth is more or less similar to that of Mars, so the asteroid belt is still in its place. The temperatures will still fall, though, and life will soon go extinct. But if Mars stayed where it is, and the Earth just shifted away, it would be a recipe for disaster. There's no chance the planets would orbit the Sun at the same rate because their mass is not equal. At some point, they would collide with each other. Taking their speed into account, they'd both crack and shatter, perhaps creating another asteroid belt in our solar system. It would be no more hopeful for us if the Earth decided to jump closer to the Sun. Apart from the star seeming more like a giant, pitiless blazing ball in the sky, its heat would melt the glaciers on our planet, making sea levels rise abruptly. The water would flood major parts of the continents, and more surfaces of the planet would be covered with water, which means more heat absorption. That would bring about a further rise in the temperature. Also, those large bodies of water would evaporate like crazy, releasing tons of water vapor and carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas that absorbs heat, and so does water vapor. Together, they would trap more and more of the sun's warmth, creating thick, roiling clouds in the sky, almost like on Venus, but without the acid. And that thick blanket of clouds would also contribute to heating the surface of our planet. In the end, the entire Earth would heat up so much that life on its surface would become unbearable for most. Only the sturdiest of creatures would be able to survive temperatures so high. Those that dwell in our deserts, for example. Despite the rainfall, which wouldn't cease as in the cold scenario, plants would still have difficulty adapting to the new and hot environments. The ones in the cooler regions of the planet would be the first to wilt and go. But then, plants from the moderate and finally tropical climes would also give up. And yet again, the Earth would turn into a barren ball of rock, only this time an overheated one rather than frozen. Our planet's distance from the Sun, its tilt, its speed of rotation around its own axis, its orbit around the Sun, and even the presence of the Moon in its skies, all of that is crucial for life on Earth to exist. For instance, if the planet wasn't tilted relative to the Sun, it would be unbearably hot on the equator and impossibly cold at the poles. The seasons would also stop changing, dividing the Earth into strips of endless summer and winter. Our planet is heated up evenly from all sides, with the current tilt and rotation, like you would roast a barbecue. It turns to the sun with one side to warm it up, while the other cools down during the night. Were there no change of night and day, we'd probably only live in some areas of our planet where constant, never-ending twilight would be. Just imagine our life without those beautiful sunrises and sunsets. Maybe we'll just let it stay as it is, okay?